And it's a good time for us to say good morning to our friend who is uh, thousands of thousands of miles away in New York City, Bishop Nathaniel. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, good mo morning, sir. How are you? I apologize for my tardiness on this phone line. <laughs> All right, sir. It happens to the best of us at times. All right, good, good to be with you again, man. And how was the weekend? And how was the Sabbath and all? Well, the Sabbath was beautiful. The weekend was very, very exciting. We uh, bought a new property uh, for the Israelites here in New York, so I'm very proud of that. And I plan on extending this to Jamaica. Okay. All right. Today we're going to be looking at a very um, a topical issue and you have been raising um, uh, this topic sensitizing the public here in Jamaica um, especially um, of, of their true origin and uh, this morning you're gonna expound more on that for us but before we get into the meat of the matter Bishop how can you be contacted and give us all the information and so on Okay, my uh, website is www.israelunite.org and you can find my uh, email through there. Uh, my phone number is 718-303-9655. All right, thank you so very much, sir. All right, now let's get to the meat of the matter now. Um, the true origin of the Israelites and where can these Israelites be found in today's modern world okay the israelites are the children of the slave trade uh the children that were conquered from 1492 throughout the 1600s and made slaves throughout various nations uh you can find that in deuteronomy 28 verse 15 down so that includes the blacks in america along with the latinos native indians the blacks in throughout the caribbean islands West Coast of Africa, South Africa, uh, places of that nature, as well as the Netherlands. Let me not forget the Netherlands. I always forget them. But yes, the Netherlands as well. Okay. And you know what I found out, Mr. Hyper? Yes. The, uh, the Christmas. You, in Jamaica, they celebrate Christmas, right? Well, yes, man. It's a popular holiday here. When, when you examine the Christmas celebration in the Netherlands, yes. they don't have elves that help Santa Claus. They have little black slaves that help Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. That is the origin, a rich first and foremost, of Santa Claus here throughout the Caribbean and the Americas. Yes. It was originally black slaves helping Santa Claus. When you look up, um, uh, Santa, it's called Santa Claus and Black Peace. And it was, the, it was the Caucasians that conquered the Moors in Spain and Christianized the Moors and made them Christians, and they began to assist the white Christians during the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And they still hold that fear in the Netherlands, Holland, uh, places like that today. It's only in America and the Caribbean they made the black slaves into elves. Oh, I you know? see. <laughs> oh, I see. The, um, made the connection. Hundred into the 1600s, they began importing slaves from Spain. Mm -hmm. Because the slaves that were conquered were actually the rulers of Spain during the Dark Ages. Those were Israelites. That oh. is, the term Moor is Latin. That simply means black. You had Muslim Moors and you had Jew Moors. Mm -hmm. You were all Israelites. You had a part of us following Islam, a part of us following uh, Judaism. And we were warring with each other. Mm -hmm. The whites came in, 1453, conquered, and they began to import us or export us from Spain to the Netherlands and to places of that nature, mm -hmm. finally to the Americas and the Caribbean as well, yes. where the bulk of us are over here. Yes. Um, the loss of this identity as to who we are how can we regain this because you have made um, you know highlights of um, where we are today in the Netherlands the Caribbean America in the Americas and so on yes when you read the book of first Kings uh, chapter 8 I'll go there first before Deuteronomy 28 first Kings chapter 8 yes and verse um, 46 I'll start there it says 
if they, this is Solomon talking about the Israelites prophetically, mm -hmm. if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy far, far or near. Now, historically, We know that we were fighting against the Caucasians. We lost, and we were made slaves. We were made captives in the land of our enemies. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, verse 47. You there, Miss Piper? I'm right here with you. Oh, okay. Verse 47 says, Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, to bethink means to remember who you are. Okay, that's what bethink means. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people. So the prophecy that Solomon gave is that the Israelites would go into captivity. Yes. It would forget who they are. They must be think who they are and repent. Mm -hmm. That's what we are doing now, Mr. Hyper. Okay? This further proves that the white man in Israel today is not the Jew. They were not led away captive. They don't have to bethink themselves. That's not them. That's us. So you're saying that there's a difference between the Jews and the Jewish people then? Uh, yes. We're the Jews. Jewish means a convert. Jewish, the word the suffix ish, I-S-H, means somewhat like, not the original, but something like. Right. Right you are. Another word. Yes. Every time the white man says he's Jewish, he's telling you he's a convert. He's telling you he's not the authentic people. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, you, you made mention that um, from the prophecy of Sol uh, Solomon that we need to repent. So the, the true Israelites need now, needs to repent to uh, get restoration so that their true identity can be restored. Is there, a tr is there a special form of worship for the Israelites that's, that are scattered that they need to get back to so that the restoration can be um, installed on this race that has been scattered abroad? Yes. Uh, verse 48, I'll read it again for your listeners. It says, And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land. Mm -hmm. So it was always the custom to pray toward, to the Father toward our land. That means you are acknowledging who you are. Yes. Okay? Our people today don't do that. We don't do that. So they misunderstand when Christ says go into your closet and pray. Yes, do that. But also, what Solomon says, pray towards your land because that's you acknowledging that is your motherland, that is your homeland, like it says in Galatians 4.26. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Yes. All right. Um, as it relates to worship, um, some times ago you, you told us that the Israelites um, uh, must keep the commandments. They must adhere to uh, the commandments um, you, you, but you didn't go in depth in, 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 um, when we had that discussion you also said that those who are not keeping the commandments they are not Israelites could you expound on that for me what I mean is that they have not uh, acknowledged who they are for example when you read Romans chapter 9 where Paul says they are not all Israel which are of Israel Yes. It simply means we're not all going to repent because the prophecy of Zechariah says that two-thirds of us will die in the land of our enemies because we refuse to repent. We love the image of the beast, which is the Caucasian Jesus, too much, our people, especially the woman. 
The black woman loves, a lot of them particularly, and effeminate black men, love the Caucasian image of the beast, and they will die here. They will die in the land of their enemies. Okay? Right. Um, I, I, Hyper, if I can, I want to read Zechariah 13 uh, and 8 so that you know what I said is true. Yes, go ahead. Zechariah 13, and, Zechariah 13 and 8 says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. So it says, two parts shall die, Mr. Hyper. That's two out of three of us. Yes. shall die in this next world war. Because we are hard-headed, rebellious people. Right. So th th um, uh, this is what I want to get from you now. For uh, um, that um, a third that will survive, there is a special order of worship. Can you take me through the paces now of that? Uh, the third that's brought through the fire. Yes. What we must do now, or what's gonna? No, no. The, the true Israelites. There's a set order how to worship the Creator. Uh, to worship God Himself, um, what's the what's the order of worship? How do you go about worshiping? For example, um, you, uh, for example, we have people going to church on Sunday. We have um, some going to church on Saturday. Can both uh, um, is the, the groups of Israelites then that is scattered? Can some keep? Uh, go into church on Sunday and make it into the promised land. Can some go on, uh, on the Sabbath and make it in? That is what I'm asking. Um, the order of worship. Okay, the order of worship was always the seventh day. The seventh day. That's always the order. When Genesis uh, chapter 2, the first high holiday that God ordained was the Sabbath day. He said, six days do your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 23, verse 1 and 2, also men makes mention of God's Sabbath day. Yes. As well as Isaiah chapter 56. It says to us to remember God's Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. So Christians today are not doing, they're keeping Sunday, which is an honor of the sun's worship. Okay? And that is the policy of Christianity. So, uh, so, so those, so, so, so those who um, keep Sunday, you're not calling. Are, are they Israelites? The true Israelites, as what you have been proclaiming over these past few weeks here in Vancouver. Um, I'll say it this way: they are our people, but they are still in error because they are follow, following the white man's form of worship that he gave us in slavery. Mm -hmm. From the Council of Nicaea, once Constantine ordained Sunday worship. White man kept that going throughout slavery and gave it to the slaves. Mm -hmm. Here today, in this day and age, many Christians, Seventh day Adventists, uh, Jehovah Witnesses, they honor what the slave master gave them, which is Sunday worship. They don't go to the Bible and say the seventh day. That's where they're making their error. Mm -hmm. All right, but I notice you put the Seventh day Adventists in there, but they worship on the uh, oh, on yes, the, yes. Uh, on the Sabbath. I apologize. I, 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 that was a slip. I'll mm -hmm. just say. Some of the offenses, Baptists, uh, Episcopalian people of that. Okay, I won't include the Seventh Day Adventists in that term, but they do still honor the white image of Jesus, which is false. Yes. Okay, that is false. That's the image of the beast. So they will still perish well, uh, uh, on the white woman. Uh, all right. Um, now, Mr. Hyper. Yeah, yes. Go ahead. Every, everybody wants eternal life, right, Mr. Hyper? You want hyper, eternal life? Yes. 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 Matthew nineteen sixteen, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. Mm -hmm. That is what Jesus, the Savior, the black Messiah, commanded. But Christians reject that and go, No, don't keep the commandment. That's why there's crime. That's why there's sin, that's why there's poverty, that's why there's AIDS, syphilis, and gonorrhea.
Mm, all right, so you have. You, we you, refuse to keep the commandments. So you're saying that if we, we had adhered to the principles of God, we would have so much chaos in the world. That's what you're saying, in a nutshell. That's right. We would have no disease. We would not have broken families if we adhere. Now, we're in the healing, we're in the restoration stage now, Ms. Iver. Yes. We can fix and heal the problem amongst our people. Mm-hmm. All must repent as Israelites. What to do, for example, I'll give, you, I'll give you one in Romans 6. This is what they do. Uh, Romans 6, let me see, let me find something they say. Uh, it says, uh, bear with me. For we are not under the law, but under... Under on, on grace. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. It's all throughout Romans, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's what they do. But when you read Romans 6 and 1, what shall we say then? We continue in sin that grace may abound, God forbid. Mm-hmm. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So Paul is telling you, grace does not allow you to break God's law because that's the sin, and sin is, according to First John 3 and 4. Yeah. Okay? Sin is the breaking of God's law. Yes. That's what many people don't understand. For example, First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's what sin is. Yes. So, when, you, when we go back to Romans 6 and 1, shall we say that? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, meaning, shall we continue breaking the commandments that grace may abound? God forbid. Meaning, no. Yes. Don't break the law. Don't break the commandments. But Christians don't understand that. Yes, but did not Paul say, let no man judge you, uh, you know, of the food that you eat or of the feast days or somewhere in Colossians? Did he, did not Paul say that too? He said that in the book of Colossians. Yes. But what is the understanding of that? That is what most people don't know, okay? They have to read the Bible precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that's what most Christians don't do and have not learned to do. For example, that the scripture that you quoted, um, when you go to uh, the book of Ezekiel, it tells you about, let me find it exactly there with me a second. Now, the one you quoted was Colossians, right? Right. Where was that at exactly? Colossians what? You remember? No, no, not 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 off the not off the top of my head right now. Let me just flip over here and see if I can uh, pull it up for you. All right, uh, dum, 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 dum. let's do something like this as we pull that up for you. But you were you're saying that um, this is uh, all, uh, misquoted um, by a lot of Christians, yes, sir. Yes, it, but, it is a misquote. We must go to the understanding. Put that. Paul never contradicted Christ, okay? Remember, Christ chose Paul. So what many people do, they go, oh, well, uh, that means we don't have to keep God's commandments anymore. That is not true. Mm-hmm. When Paul says, let no man judge you in meat or in drink, it means meat offerings, drink offerings. That's what it's talking about. Yeah. Okay? My computer. Example, for example, I'm going to read it. Ezekiel 45, 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings, and meat offerings, mm-hmm. and drink offerings, and the feast, and in the new moons, and in the Sabbath, and in all solemnities of the house of Israel. You shall prepare the sin offering, and the meat offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offering, to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So when you go to the book of Colossians, Mr. Hyper, yes. let me get it real quick for you, and to show you what the Apostle Paul was really us. Uh, Speaking of, bear with me a second. All right. Uh, Colossians 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day right. or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Right. So what I just read to you explain what Paul was making reference to. Mm-hmm. Meat and drink means meat offerings and drink offerings. Yes. Okay, and when it says, for in respect of his holy day, well, the new moon, or new moon, on those days we had to offer meat offerings and drink offerings. You understand? So Paul says, don't let the Pharisees judge you about that. That's what he was saying. 
this is what Christians refuse to understand. So you, you're saying that um, um, the, 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 the Pharisees, uh, they were um, questioning um, the Israelites at the time why they continue to do this. So probably they were feeling somewhat down and um, uh, had a conversation with Paul. So Paul was basically right. Paul was basically strengthening right. them. That's what you're saying, right? Paul, the, the Pharisees was getting on the Israelites in Colossae, for example, saying, "Why don't you offer meat offering? Why don't you offer drink offering? How come you don't sacrifice on the new moons and on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Paul says, don't let nobody judge you about that, because the next verse says, verse seventeen. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Because Christ took the, the um, place of meat offering, drink offering. He took the place of the sacrifices. Christ fulfilled all those things. Okay? Yes. Why? Because 70 AD was coming, we would be destroyed and cast out of the land. So, 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 so didn't, didn't Christ fulfill the, um, the Ten Commandments? Isn't the Ten Commandments, wasn't it like a shackle or a shadow of things to come as well as the others? Mm, no, 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 no. The, um, the thing that was a shackle was the sacrifice that Paul explained in Hebrews chapter 10. Mm -hmm. Now, the, um, watch this, and when you go to Acts, I believe it is, uh, bear with me a second. Uh, Acts 3, 18. Yes. Um, but those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. So what did Christ fulfill? The suffering, which is the sacrifice. I'm going to read it again. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. That's the explanation of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Watch this. Mm -hmm. It says, um, Think not that I am come to destroy all, all the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill what? He fulfilled suffering. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Christianity taught us no. He fulfilled, thou shalt not commit adultery. So you can commit adultery. He fulfilled, thou shalt not steal. So you can steal. This is how Christians have manipulated and warped the minds of true Israelites. Oh, so you're saying that, then that um, the Ten Commandments is still binding and all true Israelites at this time. Exactly. And not just the Ten, because remember, Leviticus uh, 2013 says, man shall not live, lay down with mankind and mm -hmm. be a woman. That's yes. talking about no homosexuality. Yes. That's not in the Ten. That's not in the Ten Commandments. Right. You understand, Mr. Hyper? Right. And so, um, love your neighbor as you love yourself, Leviticus 19.17. That's not in the Ten Commandments either. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. must keep the commandments all of them, not just the Ten. Yes, and like the Feast of Unleveled Bread and, and, and so on, Feast of Trumpets and so on. Yes, sir. We, these are, like it says in Judges 5.11, we are commanded to rehearse righteous acts. Yes. It's just for her. We know we're not doing everything 100% correct, Mr. Hyper, but God wants to see our heart of repentance. Mm -hmm. That we are trying our best, that we are sorrowful and sincere. That's what he wants to see. Okay? Not by celebrating Christmas. You've got to be great. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so you're saying, that, uh, um, as, as a true Israelite, you're not, uh, you should not partake of Christmas. You should not celebrate it. That's right. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5 says Christmas is evil. It says Christmas is some heathen custom. Okay? That's what Christmas is. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 4. Remember, Mr. Hyper, when you watch this, this is what you can ask all Christians, and I guarantee you, you won't have an answer, but they'll search it out today. When you read John chapter 10, there was one winter celebration that Christ kept. John 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. Ask a Christian, what is the Feast of Dedication? You can only find that in the book of the Apocrypha, the Maccabees. Mm -hmm. Christ kept the Feast of Dedication. He never kept Christmas. Never, ever, ever. Yes, yes. 
I, I, I'm aware of that. I, I, as, I, as I said, um, you, I told you last week, you know, I just recently got a, a copy of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the book and, uh, you know, I started reading and I realized, you know, I, I, it's a long time I, I know of, you know, some of the books that, that, that they were missing from the Bible and uh, we had um, some years ago um, the... A former prime minister's mother died, and when she um, the the funeral service, they quoted from the book of wisdom. So I went for my Bible and could not find the book of wisdom. It's only th at that time, you know, I said, "Wow, that you know, I have to you know start searching." So I started, and right, that was right. some ten, twelve years well, ago. Exactly. All King all King James versions published before sixteen sixty had the apocryphal. Right, that's why that... Greek, the, the, right, the right. Greek, which was written in 200 B.C., that had the apocrypha in it. The Latin Vulgate, written in 400 A.D., had the apocrypha. It was this white man in, Africa, in the early 1700s that said, take it out, remove it, take it out. That's why black Christians are so ignorant today. Are, 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 you, are, are you bitter against white people or the Caucasians? Uh, are you somewhat? Okay, this is the answer. Personally, Mr. Hyper, they've never done anything. In fact, when I was a Christian, I would do more for them than I would ever do for you. Because I, Christians, Christianity taught me to love them so much and to hate people like you and I. Once I repented and read the scriptures, I understand that they are Esau. They are the nation of Edom, E-D-O-M, that God hates, according to Romans 9, 13. They have never paid for their crimes, Mr. Hyper. Yes. Christ will make sure... All nations pay for their crime, starting with the so-called white man. They must pay, and they will pay. So, personally, Mr. Hyper, I have nothing against them. But biblically, I, I know who they are. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you stay far from them, from a biblical perspective. That's what you're saying? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Biblical <laughs> perspective only. Because we all, many of us have jobs, Mr. Hyper. We have to work with them. Yes. To work with them. All these things. But we know who we are now. So you you are in New York, a, a city that is dominated by the white man. How? Um, tell me about your connection with them. Do you you have to work with them? I, I, I guess. And um, what about co going coming to church? Uh, don't you have like white folks attending your sermons too? Not at all. No, 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 no. The twelve tribes of Israel, and this is a system of conception. Remember when the conquistadors conquered Central and South America? Remember that history? Yes. Columbus. The whites began to intermingle with the natives there. Let me show you something. Uh, you have Joshua 12, you have Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I'll read that one briefly to you. Deuteronomy 7, um, verse 6. Um, oh, firstly, I'm sorry. Verse 3, it says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Mm -hmm. thy, daughter shalt, thou, thy daughter shalt thou not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou give unto thy son. Yes. So the Bible has always been against us race mixing. There were only very few exceptions where God allowed that to go down. But for the most part, he says, do not do it. Okay? All right. So uh, it, it, it's a command from God that is not in the Ten Commandments, then. There you go. You know, that's not in the Ten Commandments. Yes. Outside of that, like when you read in uh, Nehemiah 13, it says not to race mix. Don't mix races. <laughs> <laughs> Nehemiah tells you Solomon's sin by doing that. Yes. Okay? Now, I know in Jamaica, y'all love the East Indies. Mm -hmm. I know, so there's a lot of mixing down there. Yes. <laughs> And, 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 and in, 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 in America, uh, the African Americans, they like uh, the Caucasian ladies, and especially the mega superstars. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And our, their son, the black man's son, is, regardless of what the mother is, is what the father is. The seed always comes from the father. Yes. Okay? So those children are Israelites. If the father is Israel... The child is Israel. Yeah, but, but, it is the yeah. but, it, but it is the mother that normally raise or grow that child. So it's the mother's um, way of life or belief will uh, be passed on to that child. You're absolutely right. You can read about that. I want your listeners to read Nehemiah chapter 13. Because what you just said is what happened in the book of Nehemiah chapter 13. 
where the children were raised by mothers of other nations and rejected God's laws because of their mothers. Because they couldn't even speak in the language of the Jews. So Nehemiah said, cast them off. Get rid of those children. That's what you read about in Nehemiah chapter 13. It's a very brutal history, but it is accurate and we shall live it so today. All right, we just have a minute to go, Bishop. Next week, um, uh, we will expound some more on that, um, of, uh, the interracial marriage and so on. Uh, you just have a minute uh, just to uh, highlight your website and how you can be contacted. And thanks again for making the connection with us here on Vibes Radio. And please make sure you study uh, to know more about the new phone, all right? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> my website is www.israelunite.org my uh, phone number is 718-303-9655 Mr. Hyper, remember the last time we spoke I told you terrorism would be on the rise yes yes the next, you... day, the next day there was terrorism in America you are so right about that you are so right about that spot answer you are right about that correct 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 all right, sir. Thanks again. It's going to happen more. All right. Thanks again, sir. And I have some stuff to send off to you, sir. And you'll get them, um, if not today, by the latest tomorrow, I promise. I've been very, very busy um, over the past two weeks. Um, we have extended um, the coverage area of Vibes Radio. So you are now fully over the western side of Jamaica in the parishes of um, Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James. Trelawney, St. Elizabeth, sections of uh, St. Anne, and also sections of Manchester and Clarendon. So um, okay. uh, you're, you're spreading your wings here in Jamaica, like Vibes Radio as well, sir. I'm buying a new phone today, Mr. Hyper. All right, sir. <laughs> blessings, blessings, blessings. And all the best, sir. We will stay in touch, all right? Good, good. Take care, Bishop. Okay, you too. Well, thank you, Mr. All right, so there, um, uh, Bishop um, Nathaniel coming through from uh, New York uh, City uh, this morning and speaking to us about the true um, identity of the Israelites. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Times. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.